Actually, you're talking about the walrus cum. You're talking about... It's not the walrus cum. I would have preferred you were talking about the walrus He's cum. He's proud of the walrus okay. cum. Okay. <laughs> he loves the walrus That's cum. That's true. That's true. There's no politics to walrus cum. Are you... Not to vice... I don't want yep. to explore okay. that. No, I don't want to explore that. So, uh, we're going to give you that Sparkle one. Sparkle Donkey. There's no politics <laughs> to walrus cum. So, the thing is, is if I say... Sparkle Donkey tequila, now with no walrus cum. That is a true statement. God awful movie. 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 Welcome to God awful movies live from Orlando, Florida. This is, of course, the podcast where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I'm pretty sure that's the only entertainment still legal in Florida at this point. <laughs> I'm your host, No Illusions, and joining me from stage right, of course, please welcome my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back, sir. Why, that's not scotch. That is not scotch. That is Sparkle Donkey Tequila. Yeah. Also known as El Budo Esparkalo. I enjoy it. It's the tequila for making kids gay. <laughs> Just like unnamed Schmizny Schmerl. Yeah, no. We'll get there, we'll get there. But first, we also have to welcome in, joining us also from stage right, please put your hands together for my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. <laughs> Listeners at home, Eli appears to be wearing some type of red thong type thing and some ears, some round ears. Eli... Eli, what are what are you what are you supposed to be? I'm the mouse. <laughs> I'm the, the Mickey Mouse. That's not. I think we can get away with Steamboat Willie, but me. Um, so <laughs> I think they'll that's, still sue us if I say this is Steamboat <laughs> Willie. But I think I we just, can undo the idea of copyright legally. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't mean to nitpick, but that is not what Mickey Mouse looks like. It is when I Google him. <laughs> Dude, did you bring normal clothes? I brought normal Okay, good, good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> oh. All right, so we, gotta, we have to kill some time. Heath, how's Orlando treating you? Orlando's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and I actually, this, this is good. I have some very important information I learned today at the Starbucks here in the Orlando area. It's about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Um, I have the pamphlet that I got. <laughs> so, yeah. Somebody walked up to me, a Jehovah's Witness, it turns out. Yeah. Asked me if I'd like to hear, you know, her important pitch. She gives this to me. She says, so, you know, Jesus died 2,000 years ago, approximately, for our sins. Very important. And here's the best part. Our Lord and Savior is coming back this month. Yeah. Yeah. March 2024. <laughs> and they're having a party for that, which they have scheduled. And I was like, okay, that's great news. And she's like, that is fucking great news. And I was like, are we all invited to the party? And she's like, you are all invited to the party. Would you like to know where the party is? For Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior of the universe, <laughs> the party will be at the Ramada. <laughs> Uh, 
Kissimmee Gateway Convention Center. <laughs> so not like Orlando, Orlando, <laughs> but like pretty good for Jesus' party, right? What if they're the ones who got it, right? <laughs> right. And the sky opens up and the fucking biblical unicorn with blood falling behind it lands next to the copious amounts of handicap parking at the, <laughs> at the Ramada. And he pulls the sword from his teeth and he's like, not worth it. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> What I love about this the most is that they've got a backup plan in case Jesus doesn't show up. There's a different party at the Ramada a couple of days. There are two later. parties. So. There's, There's the memorial party. one that's just annual. Yeah, right, right, to just in case. All right, so with that out of the way, tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. It, yeah, I guess. I, I heard an ooh, ooh. <laughs> It's the story of people going to Disney World and a mouse mascot says, hello, everybody. And they're like, stop sexualizing my child. Yep, yep. That's their response. These, these people I'm describing are called Christian and they made this movie <laughs> that we watched. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the mentally ill ramblings of your local abortion clinic protester, but you wish he did it drenched in the blood of the baby he had eaten for breakfast. Right! Yes! You will love this movie. Look, here's the thing about this movie. We watch a lot of movies where bigots say mean stuff. And we're like, bad bigot, don't say mean stuff. But this is a movie about victimizing children made by the Catholic League. Yes! Yes! The Catholic. We had to have a team meeting beforehand where they were like, Eli, you can only say, really, Bill Donahue? A certain amount of time. <laughs> the whole podcast can't just be Eli going, really, Bill Donahue of the Catholic League? You're going to try your best to make it approximately that, It's going to yeah. be a okay. lot of that. Yep, yep. Okay. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst and another thing. So, okay. did anybody watch this piece of shit? Whatever you want to call it? Okay. Okay. All right. So you're aware they're trying to make their main point that like, Disney's making kids gay, whatever. But several times they're like, and a fucking other thing. It's not related to that. It's just, you know the guy at the bar? He's the last person in the bar, end of the night. And he's like, and also fucking vaccine. Nobody's here. There's <laughs> nobody. And they actually, vaccinations, they actually. Yeah, no, we get there. Go we get there. It. You got that to look forward to. Yeah. So I was going to go with best worst loaded questions. Unfortunately, this was restricted to the very beginning. I mean, not restricted, but like the guy who was master of this was only in the very introduction, that Will Witt guy. But he was just wandering around Disney and he kept asking children like, what would you rather be gay or have fun? Right? I, there's another one that agrees with us. And he just did this like eight times. I loved him so goddamn much. I wanted much. one kid to be like, gay. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had your cock sucked by someone who has a cock will, whatever the you're fucking... The greatest. <laughs> it's the best. There's no question whether or not they're going to swallow your cum. It's a treat. <laughs> Anyways, I got to get back to my sixth birthday, but this has been great. <laughs> You a child pug a peg of corn? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with best worst green screen. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall and hosts this movie. <laughs> 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 and they decided to have her do it in front of ominous green screen. Yes. But their lawyers were like, if you show a single Disney property, I will kill myself in front of you. Yes. So it's just like spooky pumpkins. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it rules. It's amazing. All right, well, no doubt DeSantis is deploying his operatives to this location as we speak, so we're going to keep the break brief, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the shameless disinformation that is. Oh! 
<laughs> damn it. It's I, and I already milked in, I already milked the fucking heart attack sympathy early, god oh, damn it. Oh, you use it? I, I already used it. Shit. This could be a stroke. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in a minute with even more Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. Hi, I'm Ray Kampfett. And I'm No Illusions, here to talk to you about me undies. You're here to talk about your undies? That's inappropriate. No, Ray, me undies. Underwear drawers are like the Wild West of wardrobes. There's no rhyme or reason to them. Anything goes. You got pairs from three birthdays and two Christmases ago, pairs from five different brands with five different fits. When you open that drawer every morning, you have no idea what to expect. Well, now that I've felt the buttery, soft comfort of me undies, my other pairs have got to go because me undies is all I reach for. Well, I certainly hope so. From all black classics to fun, expressive prints, MeUndies has a look for everyone. Plus, they come in sizes XS to 4XL, guaranteeing a flattering cut for every body. Plus, if you're not happy with your first pair of undies, it's on MeUndies. All that's on MeUndies is some mustard. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash awful. That's MeUndies.com slash awful for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. All right, then. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, did you say that you got mustard on your underwear? It's, it's for my night hot dog. I get it. I get it, bud. He, he stopped agreeing with Ray Comfort. When he's right, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen. Yeah, Bill, what's up? Yeah, you, you, you need some? Yeah, you guys are in charge of our movie department. Is that correct? Well, I, yeah, I mean, we mostly just film long shots of churches and put a video on Facebook that says, you know, happy day of the Annunciation of St. Paraquis. But, but, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I need you to make a documentary. Oh, about what? Oh, one of the gravest threats to the church and the human soul that we have ever faced. Oh, wow. Is it about all the child molestation? Yeah, or the seized Nazi property during World War II that we definitely still own. Or the homophobia. The racism. And the mass graves, which indicate an orphanage system much more like a death camp than a place of refuge for the most vulnerable among us. Um, no. Oh, wow. What is it then? There's a gay guy in the new Beauty and the Beast. Oh, right. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll get on that. On it. Yep. We still own Nazi property? Like a lot, man. Oh, a lot. I think you know full well <laughs> we do. <laughs> and we're back! <laughs> and I love this so much. This movie starts with a not touching, can't get litigious disclaimer, <laughs> yeah. right? It's so long, but it's just like, we're going to do the whole movie with question marks at the end. So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really counts. count. We're just asking None questions. The, the last line of their disclaimer, it says, uh, these views and opinions should not be taken as statements of fact and are not, it should not be taken as statements of fact at the beginning of the movie and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, <laughs> or individual. <laughs> so... You're welcome, uh, Mesopotamians. Yeah, right. <laughs> Us too, by the way, Disney. We also disclaim. Not true. Fuck Mesopotamia. <laughs> wait, wait. Where is Mesopotamia? <laughs> Between the two rivers. Literally the name. That, that, that's, I so, want to go with somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Sweden. Yeah, you can. Yeah, fuck Sweden. Sure. You can get away with that. Uh, but yeah, so they, they tell us that they tell us that this film is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company in case we were in danger of not figuring that out. And then we get someone's just sitting in the Disney boardroom meeting, hey fellas, what about fuck us? <laughs> 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 we're always making those Imagineer pictures we put up on Disney Plus for Eli's autistic son to watch, but what if we made one where it's just like fuck us, you know? Yes. <laughs> That's like the thesis of the movie. Though. Yeah, it is, though. Yeah. yeah, actually. So, yeah. So, and then we get the splash that you always get in these documentaries of like a couple of the different talking heads that we're going to see making their best points right at the beginning. One of them says, like, you know, once upon a time, Disney was the family network. I'm like, yeah, they changed the name to Freeform in 2016 for some fucking reason. I don't know. They still own it. 
I yeah. guess. We get teased with the fact that Ben Carson will be in this movie later, so. Hell yeah! Get excited about that. How has Ben Carson's eyes gotten more closed? <laughs> Because they were all the way closed when we met him, and now they're somehow invert. Like other people's eyes are closed around him. Yeah, yeah. No, but he does leave. I, I, I'm sad to say, he does leave his invisible boobs at home for this one. Normally, when you see Ben Carson, he's always got both hands. He doesn't. He doesn't do that in the movie. So and oh, and we get a glimpse of Bill Donahue looking all fucking pre crang like he does. <laughs> Fuck yes. Yeah. Bill Donahue has a scar on his lip from where he killed a family, but a young swordsman bravely. <laughs> that yeah. One. yeah. He's like a villain origin story. <laughs> if, there's no way Bill Donahue looks in the mirror every morning and is like, I'm the good guy. This is what the good guy looks like. Yes. If think... mashed potatoes had glasses and were racist, yeah. that's me, and that's probably. <laughs> That's probably what the good guy in a story looks like is me. Yep, yep. <laughs> he looks like Sloth went to Men's Warehouse, and I think he likes the way he looks. He does. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? So yeah, we get one guy, he says, you know, that Disney threw away all of their good graces as a company deliberately. They got very political. And then to demonstrate that, we cut to a Disney logo with a, with a pride flag in it that some chick has decaled on her breasts. I don't think Which, that was an official Disney decision. I don't decision. think it was, though. <laughs> but can I say, if so, go Disney. Yeah, right? <laughs> Just, this is the year of tits. You'll buy whatever we're selling. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> Disney tits. It's, it's the not-so-scary Halloween this year. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. And, of course, then we have to confront, for the first time in the movie, we get this, like, man on the street who's, like, um... Well, you know, we're not happy that Disney's grooming our children. And then we're all like, it's made by the fucking Catholic League. <laughs> That'll happen a lot. I like that they had to blur just a star on that guy's <laughs> shirt. <laughs> what, like, they were going to get sued by outer space? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Well, and what I love so much about this beginning is that they keep saying, like, they'll, they'll be like, you know, this is incredibly dangerous and the children are at danger and take us very seriously. And then they'll cut the images of Goofy and Mickey Mouse and shit. And we'll be like, how do you not see this? Or guys? like happy children. Right, right, yeah. And now we're going to meet our host. This is Mercedes Schlapp. <laughs> hey, hey, if you grew up with that name, you'd have turned out to suck too, okay? <laughs> All right, everyone, first day of school, schlap, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to be a fucking homophobe when I grow up. What the fuck else am I going to do? Okay, she married she, somebody named schlap. She married into purpose. schlap. Yep. Matt yep. Schlapp. No one was, she knew what she was schlapp. getting to. You know a kid's movie where a mean lady at the end, she's all covered in water, <laughs> and she's been dyed blue? Yes. And her dog is shaved? That's how Mercedes Schlapp starts looking. <laughs> So, Sorry, I was trying to close down a ranch. <laughs> I'm Mercedes Schlapp. So, and as, as we're getting over the fact that her name is Mercedes Schlapp, we, we, we become aware of this dystopian Disney background behind her. This best worst background. And it's just, it's like Disney World reimagined by a talentless Tim Burton. Um... <laughs> So Tim so, Burton. So Disney World. Okay. All right. I'm. Yeah, I'm not afraid. We're in a split fucking room. fight. We're in a fight. I'm leaving. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to split this room. <laughs> All the goths in the room are having their first emotions. <laughs> <laughs> Must have more well, buckles. No, they're, they're, they're second after they saw that image of the new crow. But right, yeah. yeah. So right, yeah. So, Every empty seat you see in the theater that night is a goth who's at home just yes. to the new crow. So, that was masturbation for you at home. If oh, you good. Last, yeah. Good. That's, that's how hard they're doing it to the new crow. Have you seen the new crow? <laughs> Apparently not. Let's just look at the images from the new crow Let's instead of the podcast. All right. All right. While you're doing that, I'm going to move on to this next scene. Where, uh, <laughs> right? Where... <laughs> We, we're not okay, online. That's... You're not online, man. The, the Wi-Fi didn't work. I was look imagining at, it. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing some fucking space work, no illusions. God damn. 
You know the first thing that comes. It's fine. Destroying so, the magic. <laughs> so t- yes, off offline. He has it offline. <laughs> There's a reason for that. That's actually a condition of the theater, actually. No. <clears throat> you watch three hardcore videos, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you're not a guest of the Orange Shakes anymore. <laughs> Orlando. <laughs> Orlando Shakes. Yeah, I'm sure they wanted you to get it right at yeah. that exact moment more than any other. <laughs> anyway, Mercedes Schlapp. She Sparkle out- Donkey Tequila. Watch <laughs> porn on public internet. <laughs> Apparently, she will not have Sparkle Doggy's name maligned like that. So, yeah, but Mercedes tells us that the Disney movies are, quote, served with a side of sexuality and gender ideology. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, look, I've seen a Pixar mom, so I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, and they say that Disney is going to render parents powerless. And I'm like, look, man, if, if Disney can take away the power from the parents they're talking about, I'll forgive them the parking fees. Shit. <laughs> I'm all right. So, okay. And then we meet our other host, and it, he'll sadly disappear from the movie. This is Will Witt. He indru- introduces himself. Um, he's, you know he's full of shit because his job is podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fuck podcaster and, and influencer. influencer. Right, he's right, got- yeah. He's got a side hustle of influence. <laughs> like, you couldn't make yourself worse except adding the word. There's all yep. you could do. Yep. I think he just does our job, plus he expects his meals to be free everywhere he goes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, did you not see my 27 followers on Instagram? So, you Maybe hate for me to say For the table. <laughs> so, yeah, so he's going it's around. Just him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to Will Witt he's going around harassing people on their way into Disney asking them stupid fucking questions he finds like the guy in the don't tread on me shirt he thinks Disney should go back to their roots now uh, that's sad but the expression on his child's face makes it awesome yeah doesn't it I don't know if you all saw it but that kid is blinking for help in SOS <laughs> it's- um, he's like, the dad is like, well, I think, and the kid's just like, I'm turning gay right now. <laughs> <laughs> you might not be born this way, but I'm going to fucking try. <laughs> you can do it if you try. <laughs> they don't want you to know, but you got to, and you can do it. <laughs> you can. It's the Bell Salva maneuver, but yeah. Be brave. I'll do it. So they, Sparkle Donkey Tequila. So he goes to wrestling. <laughs> it's about breathing. <laughs> it's about breathing. <laughs> the bravest choice is to be gay. Sparkle Donkey Tequila. <laughs> that should be their Pride Month campaign. Yeah, Everyone, shouldn't it though? I don't know if I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, y'all, we're our, we are two scenes. We're not even done with the credits yet. So, as a matter of fact, this is the part of the movie where the credits come up, uh, up and tell me that Tony Perkins is going to be in this movie. So, I, if, you don't, if you're not familiar, Tony Perkins is the most obsessed with uh, cartoon genitals of anyone outside of Eli. It's really incredible. And he doesn't even have the decency to jerk off to him. Right, yeah, exactly. He's just, well, we don't know. He doesn't have the He's decency to admit. To, yeah, th- thank you, thank you. So yeah, so and Will Witt's still running around. He says to one uh, one family, "This is again, this is a direct quote. I'm not making this shit up. Do you prefer your movies to be fun and entertaining <laughs> rather than to have some ideological message? Do you like fun, squirrelly <laughs> or gay, boy? <laughs> one boo. Who said boo? Someone said boo. Someone cool. <laughs> and probably like, an influencer. <laughs> yeah." It's, as I'm writing that down, he asks, "Do you? Yeah, some little kid, like seven-year-old kid. Do you want politics in your movies, or do you just want to have fun at the movies?" <laughs> Jesus Christ! So then we, with our credits wrap up, we get the title, Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom, and then Mercedes introduces us to the premise, which is, of course, that Disney is all fucky and gay now. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And they, get, they, they spend this entire movie making it sound like a great fucking time. Mercedes Schlapp looks like if not looking like your profile picture on a dating website could be a TV host. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that my age? I put my daughter's age. My mistake. <laughs> so, 
My finger fell off. <laughs> that part helped, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, but she, she starts talking about... I like about, ampute. It's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, but so she starts explaining how Disney is pushing elementary schools to discuss gender identity with children as young as kindergarten. But, like, first of all, I don't think Disney is setting those policies, but also, like... We do discuss gender identity with kids in kindergarten. That's how they know which room to pee in, right? Like, that's already a thing. But, and then she says, and she's so proud of this one, she says, and I quote, why didn't Disney just take a page from Frozen and let it go? <laughs> Get it? S somebody wrote that. Yep. we are like, nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah. Everybody. Enter. Everybody shut up. What? What do you got? I got a great one. Go. I got a great one. You said it twice. Go. I got a great one. Three now. A lot of pressure built in. This better be fucking great. I know we're late to the party for Jesus. Super late. At the Romana. It's at the Romana. <laughs> I brought ice. One of them be like frozen athletic. <laughs> okay, also, Elsa is literally a gay icon. It's a gay yes, metaphor. Right, yeah. right, yes, exactly. Like of they, all the movies to bring up. They should be afraid of the army of five-year-old lesbians. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's real, and they should be afraid. Sparkle Donkey, the official tequila of armies of five-year-old lesbians. So... Where's so, that Children of Men reboot, huh? <laughs> Idris Elba won't return my calls, that's why. That's not why. <laughs> <laughs> so then we also we hear briefly from a disillusioned ex-Disney employee, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if there's any ex-employees of the Catholic Church that would have something negative to say, guys. Hey, is there any chance... Door? Is there any chance this guy's running for Congress here in Florida and affiliated with the literal John Birch Society? Yes, yeah. yes, Jose Castillo. Yeah, wow. but he remembers when Disney tried at first, they didn't want to get involved when, with DeSantis' fascist takeover of the schools. He's like, I remember that. And I'm like, yeah, I remember that too, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> as much as Disney would love for me not to. But then, of course, the Disney employees, many Disney employees walked out over that decision, over Disney's decision not to respond to it. So there is a hero in this movie, if nothing else. Jeff, tell them thank you on my behalf for that. Um, they're, they're actually not allowed to speak to each other in case it begins a unionization yeah. process, yeah, but I'm right. sure. <laughs> Blink thank you to them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, that's, so I can't remember who, so we put it out on our Facebook post of like, how the hell are you going to hate a mega corporation wrong? Right? Like, there are so many right ways to hate Disney. Jesus Christ, you assholes. But yeah, so, so, but then we get, we hear from Miranda Devine. She's also one of our talking heads. She's a columnist for the, for the New York Post. Maybe don't mention. <laughs> if you want to know. Just say columnist. I work at for the point. New York <laughs> newspaper. What was um, that? A paper in New York. New York heard of it. Newspaper. <laughs> So it's, it's, like, it's like if you put the Washington Post or the New York Times together, it's that good. <laughs> Fun fact, I Googled her to figure out who the hell she was, and the word Hunter's Laptop, those words, <laughs> they showed up, this is, for reals, I, 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 I checked, that showed up 14 times on page one of her Google results. Hell yeah! So, so but then Bill Donahue comes in, right? He starts defending the Don't Say Gay Bill, which is what most of this movie is going to be out, the first half of it or so. My favorite thing about the defense of the Don't Say Gay Bill is that they're not like, it's not an evil, horrible, homophobic thing. They're like, it's not a big deal, you're freaking out. Yes, right, It's right. like someone who just committed a crime on a date night trying to get everyone to calm down and you're just trying to call 911 for the person they ran over. They're like, you guys are being weird, you're ruining <laughs> my birthdays. <laughs> He's fine. He walked... Well, he crawled away. He crawled away. He's fine. It's just the don't say gay bill. It's fine. Right. No, he's, he's like, Bill on. He was like, oh, the bill is innocuous. It's family friendly. And I'm like, oh, boy, I hope uh, for your sake that the bill doesn't cause dictionaries and thesauruses to be banned from schools between <laughs> then and now. It did. Yeah. Didn't age well. And the Bible. Yeah. yeah. So, right. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yep. It's not all bad. So yeah, so but then Tony Perkins shows up very briefly. 
and explains to us that instead of teaching their ABCs and how to tie their shoes, kids are now being taught how to fuck. And they, they always bring out this one sex education book that has like cartoons blowing each other or whatever. Right, yeah. It's, <laughs> this is sparkle so, so donkey in it. To be, clearly, to be clear, it's not, an, it's not like a, a textbook for sex ed. It's a book that was available in some libraries, but it right. wasn't like a book that was being taught. Like in one school. library had fucking Asterix blowing the others. Obelix. Obelix. And right? Sparkle and, Donkey. And they're like, yeah. this was the law! Yeah. Right. Yes. yes. But what I love about it is that they show it like we're supposed to be so scared of it, and then Tony Perkins goes, we didn't hear about this till we were teenagers. And I'm like, yeah, it turned out awesome, huh, Tony Yes, per yes. Tony Perkins, the man whose fucking entire career is an obsession with Disney dicks. Yes. <laughs> Whatever they did with you, yeah, let's keep doing that, bro. But then, so, but Mercedes explains to us that during the COVID lockdowns, a lot of parents for the first time saw what their kids were learning at school because they were learning from home. And of course, it's all just wall-to-wall -wall dicks, apparently. So they were, they also, were very offended. Also, that's horrible parenting. Right, yeah. For the first time, you learned about the curriculum and you were like, it's dicks? Well, right, and it was wall-to-wall -wall dicks the whole yeah. time, yeah. That's your right. fault. Yeah, exactly. Miranda Devine comes on. She says, little kids don't need to know about a thousand different genders. And I'm like, well, somebody should have explained to you the part of the world at some point, obviously. So Yeah, and also, this is the same people that want, like, kids to learn all the tribes of Malachi. Yeah, school. right. Exactly, right. <laughs> So, oh, and then, of course, we get another one of our talking heads for the film, one Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, I love this dude. He looks like he always something about married himself with walrus cum. <laughs> <laughs> like, there, okay. there is a sarcastic hairstylist in his life who's just like, a little bit more, Vivek. <laughs> yeah, no, use the whole other jar. That's great. <laughs> What is this going to be on? Oh, yeah, no, you're going to be president. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, he's not. No. no. No, Already dropped out. God. Also not going to be vice president, man. I'm sorry. But, yeah, but he explains that the, the reason that you see skyrocketing gender dysphoria is because kids are so impressionable and they're seeing all this gayness and transness in, on Disney. And I'm like, are you sure it's not, like, the national effort to demonize them by people who are burning from pre for fucking president and shit? You don't think that has anything to do with it? Maybe. Cancer's up because of MRI scans. Yeah, right. Existing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. All, all these power outages in Texas. Fuck you, Thomas Edison. <laughs> it's your fault. It is the though. dumbest dark. If it weren't for you and your postmodern light bulbs, we would never know the difference between <laughs> what's going on in Texas and the rest of America. Yes. <laughs> Squint, nit, 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 man. <laughs> so. Yeah, but then they the uh, the Hor Horowitz. What's his the what's that guy's name? David, David Horowitz. Horowitz. Fuck yeah, yeah David Horowitz. Oh. David Horowitz literally betrayed socialism. So for those of you who don't know, sure David Hor Horowitz was like a cool liberal, and then Reagan came around and he was like, "No, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. This guy is the new cool. He was like a hippie socialist Marxist leader of the leftist movement who was like, wait, 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 wait." Let's hear that actor who did a movie with the monkey out. <laughs> <laughs> and Florida, I feel you pulling back from the voice that I'm doing right now, but that's how David Horowitz talks, okay? okay? <laughs> Lean in, Florida. I don't think they were so, pulling back that much. So I yeah, felt it. You but felt he explains bit? that they're encouraging kids to be chemically castrated, but then eventually admits that he's talking about puberty blockers, which is not that. Which movie is that from Disney? Do people know a lot of Disney movies? <laughs> which was the castration one? It's one of the symbols in uh, Encanto. It's one of the... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Gotcha. That's right, that's it. It's what Mary Shell ends up with, actually. <laughs> it's like, it's a whoop! <laughs> she just snips her fingers in front of you, your dick disappears. <laughs> Make that a musical. When I well, Google it, that's what comes up. <laughs> well, what I love about this so much is the, the guy who's talking about puberty blockers at some point, he says, like, he's like, you know, they're, they're encouraging these children on puberty blockers to make these decisions that'll alter their lives forever. And I'm like, you're thinking of puberty, man. Puberty, yeah. That's the thing that alters your life forever. Unlike puberty, which we all know is a super chill time that causes no <laughs> change at all. So... And then this guy, Brent Bozell, I don't even remember what the hell his Chiron said he was. He comes up and he says, it's not just that Disney is anti-parent. He says that they're against the nuclear family. 
Sorry. Except. <laughs> Sorry. I hate to correct you. Well, oh, yes, yes, please do. I believe you said Disney is anti the <laughs> family. And he then goes, he, he, he goes, tried to say nuclear five more times oh my God. in the next eight seconds, and it got worse New than what time. I just said. He's so sure that if he says clue, clue in the middle, it's going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, is he practiced Nuclear. before, and he was like, remember, it's You got to hit the clue, clue, clue. It's new clue, 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 clue. clue. <laughs> Shit. But also, what a stupid premise. Disney's against the nuclear family. You know what we need is we need more three-parent families. That way we can sell more shit. <laughs> Wait, so, yeah. Um, but, but that's the thing. Like, nowhere does this movie fail harder than the because, right? Because they constantly get to that. And, then, and that's why, it, and then the Disney will use that to turn all the kids gay. And somebody will go, why do they want all the kids to be gay? And they're like, and another thing. Vaccine. <laughs> cut. Can we cut? Michelle Slap melted again. So, can we get her in an, in what, an ice chest or something? <laughs> we got 20 more minutes of shooting. They should have done freeze frames in their documentary and just yeah. been like, nobody's looking. We can't. <laughs> Did we make a point yet? All Go right. back to Vivek. Well, I'll tell you what, we needed a minute here to check and see if Disney has successfully made us gay yet. We've been here for a few days, so we're going to take a quick break. That has to be done off the air, but we'll be back in a minute with even more of Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And then I said, well, is that for all the tickets or each? And she said... Each. Ouch. Hey, podcast listener. As you can tell, our very own Eli Bosnick is still recovering from paying the prices at a Walt Disney Park. But whether you're reeling from the price of parking or just going through a difficult time in your life, talking it through can help. And that's why there's better help. Oh, and the Dole Whip. Guess how much they charge for the Dole Whip. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched up with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. You know what I wish had no additional charge? Is it Disney? Disney, yes. Mm -hmm. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. BetterHelp. It can't lower the prices at Disney but it can help you cope with them. When the lady told me how much a sweatshirt cost, I just started weeping. weeping. Yeah, just I know, weep. man. I saw the footage on the news. Yeah. All right, little Timmy, you ready for Disney? Sure am. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Disney. Would you like Disney World or Disney Classic? Um, what's Disney Classic? Well, a lot of folks complained lately that Disney has gotten too woke, so we created a separate park we're calling Disney Classic just for them. Well, that's great. I got to tell you, I never cared for all that LGBT stuff anyhow. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. Right to the entrance to the right there. There it is. Nice. I just can't. I just wait till you see Space Mountain, Timmy. You're good. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, Space Mountain is in the other park. Oh, it is? Why? Well, some of our flat earth and biblical literalist guests over at Disney Classic don't like reminders of the heliocentric model, so we thought it'd be best to keep it in Disney World. Oh, all right, sure. Well, I mean, at least we can still go to Splash Mountain. <laughs> That's a lot um, of fun. Unfortunately, uh, Splash Mountain was a little too immodest for classic Disney. Uh, all right, so, all right, well, so what does Disney Classic have? Oh, well, let's see. We, we had to get rid of most of the rides and shows. You know, lots of Black Mermaids. So you can understand. Oh, yeah. No, I was real mad about that. Yeah, you were. So, yeah, uh, classic Disney pretty much just has the Hall of Presidents, Song of the South, and the Jack Sparrow animatronic from the Pirates ride. The whole ride or? Uh... Nope. Just the animatronic. Do not get too close. Got, got it. I'm turning gay out of spite right now. I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That tracks. <laughs> You do, well, you don't have to squeeze. You don't know. I think it's working. <laughs> and we're back. Thank you, thank you. 
I wasn't sure if you could do another applause so early. I don't thought maybe you'd need a refractory period, but you guys are good. Some so, Chinese food and some Powerade. Fuck yeah. Sparkle Donkey tequila. <laughs> I think Sparkle Donkey would be very happy for us to say that is not what to do during your refractory period. I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> you don't think oh, you should, damn it, you I don't know think I want to be the official tequila of the refractory period. Interesting. Yeah, that's good. Right? That's good. Sparkle right. Donkey, you can come again. Yeah. There you go. Maybe. That's the way nice. Give it a point. try. You know say, yeah. Or don't. So we're going to Sparkle Donkey, make him come again. <laughs> It's good shit. You can, you guys I can gendered it so it's fun again. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so we were going to rejoin the action. We're in like a support group or something for like ex-Disney employees who were persecuted for their straightness or something. This very much started off as the ugliest people who work at Disney support okay. group. <laughs> okay. I went to Disney, okay? And they these people must work in like the nuclear reactor of Disney. <laughs> Okay. So, okay. Disney is a bunch of svelte, young, fresh fit, and these people are all like, I don't like that the Santa Group do. It's like, what the fuck did you work as? A pretzel shaped as Mickey? <laughs> Were you Dole Whip? What the fuck? <laughs> Half the people in this meeting, there's no way they worked at a theme park and someone wasn't like, ah! There's no fucking shot. You brought your child into Disney theme parks and didn't turn right around being like, oh no, something melted down. No, we gotta go. So, we gotta go. See, that's what happens when you're mean to Ursula right there. <laughs> Steals your voice. You hang out in her basement. So, Sparkle Dunk. We hear. <laughs> Make him come again. Are you picturing the Mortal Kombat voice? I can't do it, but it is. Like, get over here. Yeah. And come again. And come again. <laughs> so we heard from our buddy Jose again. He's like, you know, actually, you know, there's actually a lot of gay people who are on our side of it. It's so weird that you couldn't find a bunch of them to interview for your movie. But trust us, you, they are. They're there. We should, oh, we should also point out that the whole time they're talking, there's like this creepy version of London Bridge playing in a minor key in the background. <laughs> this will show back up several times with other public domain songs. <laughs> but yeah, so the, but they explain to us, these employees, these ex-employees explain that surveys show that Disney's employees didn't want to be all gay, right? But the company was making them be all gay. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, well, look, you... This is the state that elected Ron to fucking Santos. That's probably true, right? That doesn't. What does that tell you? Um, but then Mercedes comes in to double down on this, right? She pulls up some uh, Washington Post poll that said that Americans don't want all this gay stuff in their schools, right? Okay, but I couldn't pay attention to her poll or her numbers because they put the cartoon background green yes. screen thing. Uh -huh. And everything is way too big for a human body to be next to. Mm -hmm. She's standing next to a microphone that looks like a butt plug for a giant <laughs> or something. It's very confusing. Well, I love the fucking poll that she's pointing to. She's like, well, you know, the American people don't want this in their schools. I'm like, yeah, when were the American people ever wrong about who did and didn't belong in the schools, right? Like, what the fuck does that Certainly tell you? Certainly not in the fine state of not, Florida. Not <laughs> Ruby who? But then we... Is that one of them Steven Universe gays? So... Two queers in the audience fucking loved that joke. Like... Like most of you are like, I, I've heard of that, but the gays are like, yeah! It's okay you got Garnet's name wrong. We loved it. So then we... My wife is one of the gays. I'm just letting you know. She's 50%. Hometown so, joke. Then we get a little... um. We get a Ron DeSantis clip, right, where, where he is all mopey. Yeah, tell me about it. But this oh. is... That was... Okay, can you I You guys could have had a fucking we, astronaut. We've made a lot of audiences <laughs> boo in our time. That was from your hearts. Yeah. <laughs> they just heard it. Whenever... When we go down south, we're always like, Brian Camp or whoever, and everyone's like, boo. You guys were like, boo, boo. Oh. <laughs> like, 
I feel like if we made, if we just let let that rise, we'd get a news Chiron tomorrow about like, yeah, right. Podcast right. audience marches to State House. <laughs> I just, it's a long fucking march, guys. Sparkle Donkey Tequila, you're an open carry state. <laughs> Sparkle Donkey Tequila. We could throw a wick in there, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> so then, so Miranda comes on and she's like, well, you know, the Disney, they came out against Ron DeSantis' Don't Say Gay Bill, but then he decided he would revoke their special tax privileges and we're like, oh, how'd that go for him? And she's like, moving on. Okay. So, a reminder, he's having trouble with that because the House of Windsor still exists. Yes, right, right, exactly. That's the problem. Look in a closet. That's the problem. As soon as they can take care of that. So good. Why Disney, we, Disney needs to make a movie about DeSantis, right? They should just like lean into this and fuck with him. Fuck, yeah. I feel like just like puss in boots or something, right? <laughs> Come on. Just make the guy a fucking character. Thank you. Right. That's fucking brilliant. Ronnie. That's amazing. Two boots. So, and then they introduce, they quick move on from that uh, tax dispute between Disney and DeSantis. They move on to uh, bitch about ESPN being all gay now. Which okay. gay They're talking about how the ESPN commentators are Disney owned. Yes. Which is especially unfortunate when one of them is a woman of color. Yes. Yes. They're like, these Disney-owned commentators, and it flashes to a woman of color like she just heard her self-described as owned, and she's like, what are those motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> Was that Miranda Schlapp again? <laughs> well, I then- thought the first time I covered her in burning oil, she learned her lesson. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently she just absorbed it, and it's her outer layer now. <laughs> <laughs> so now... We get Tony Perkins complaining about how the, the, they're letting their political agenda interfere with the sanctity of sports. And I'm like, if I had the time, I bet I could dig up a clip of 1940s Tony Perkins saying that about Jackie Robinson, too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Wouldn't be all that hard. Then we get Tucker. Yeah! yeah. See, not as passionate. No, right? not no, even close. No, that was solid. No, you hate him. I'm solid. not saying you right, don't hate right, him. No, no. But I'm saying you weren't ready to do anything. <laughs> If we had walked so, Ron out on stage, this is murder on the Orient Express. <laughs> so good up. I think the lawyers Roberts. are going to cut all this shit. Love it while you're here. You have a um, boo for Tucker. You have a plan for Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here's the thing. My cousin has a gator farm, right? And they'll just eat it. <laughs> They'll just eat about anything. You're driving to your elementary school job where you're a librarian. I can feed him in one piece at a time every Thursday. That's when nobody's down there because they're washing the cages. (laughs) What's that? You wanted a book on microscopes? Yeah, let's fucking find one. (laughs) What was I thinking about? Nothing. (laughs) Christmas. (laughs) So we get Tucker Carlson. Now all most of that's got to go. So we'll just uh, we'll just get a nice clean in. <laughs> we get Tucker see what Carlson. you get for coming to the live show. Hey, <laughs> Textbook felonies. <Yeah. laughs> Tucker gets his um, wimpy kitty baby whiners moment here, right? Where he's like ESPN. It's more like endless stupid political nagging. Nailed it. Got him. Okay, either somebody wrote that or he ad-libbed that. I don't know which is worse. Right? Both really bad. Yes. And then... (laughs) LGBTQ, more like little gay... Fuck, that's... (laughs) That's the real one. That's what it's... Damn it, I got it right again by accident. We should write these ad. So... (laughs) We get Bill Donkey. I'm a Russian spy. There's also this great moment. <laughs> I didn't realize that until late in the game. They said I had to give Dominion voting my car. 
just like the keys. <laughs> There's also this fun moment where Bill Donahue comes in and he's talking about how, like, you know, they're talking about how none of this belongs in sports. He's like, you know, you don't bring the politics in sports. Once you're out of sports, that's okay. Right? Because he didn't want us to think he was anti Herschel Walker or whatever. Tommy Tuberville and Herschel Walker. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cut. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You see, All you're you forcing have, it. You're yeah. forcing it. You know you don't care about Tommy Tuberville. You don't think they'd they murder Tuberville? No. They don't even know. A third of them don't know who Tuberville is, but they're like, there were booze. Oh, you there under, were booze. We, we got you, some Alabama. You don't he know does. who Tommy yeah. A third of us doesn't know who Tommy Tuberville is. Okay. That's He's what the evil potato from the little engine they could. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Right? Yeah. No, actually, he is. He's like, he is, I think though. I can, and Tommy Tuberville's like, no, you fucking can't. So they cut him after the 1940s. There's... <laughs> Well, we're going to get to we'll that. Actually. that shows they up sail later the this. train with his ears. It so, works out at the end. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> his ears are stupid. They're big. Very big ears. So, yeah, so then we... Have- if you murder him, get his ear and give it to me. Oh, big heat Smother points. him with his ear, just pull it over the... Yeah. Just a, I don't like that we're so spreading necklace. commission. I feel like we might have like, like done it on. And I feel like we can't. <laughs> I, think there, I think there was definitely like there was a euphemistic quality that this this is now lacking. That's <laughs> bothering me quite a bit. I Kill Tommy Tuberville? So, <laughs> so, okay. So we're going to check back in. This is Ron DeSantis' house. Oh, okay. 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 So... Why was the live show so Vivek Ramaswamy? <laughs> is this, so Vivek Ramaswamy is very upset that in their efforts at, at inclusion, Disney has excluded all the bigots, and we're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we check back in with our ex-employees who want to let everybody know how threatened they felt by the company's gayness. Good. Fucking right? good. Yes. They're all afraid to, that you're going to be fired. Fucking yeah. great. There's. Well, she goes. There's one lady, and she's just mid-hyperventilate. Like, I don't think she's ever ventilated. She's just, <laughs> and she's like, you know, when I worked at Disney, we never treated anyone differently. And I genuinely don't know if she thinks that's a good or a bad thing. Right. Like, it must have sucked for the people in wheelchairs. Jesus. <laughs> I just wanted to say, there's one, whenever they walked in the door. <laughs> Wasn't even an option. Do you guys feel like you're in space? <laughs> she is. Or up a real tall mountain? Because I feel that way all the time. <laughs> How often do you think people ask that lady if she's okay? <laughs> she goes... <laughs> and she has to be like, I'm fine. Why do you keep asking me that? <laughs> she's the one. She's also the one that gives us like the all lives matter of diversity training. Right? She's like, we, took, we had to take diversity training which, by the way, I, as I understand it, is not standard in Disney, so she must have done something. <laughs> so she's right, yes. Yeah, so she had to take diversity training. And she's like, you know, they never, they never even talk to you about being inclusive of white people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we've listened to your feedback, and we're ready to do our inclusivity to white people section of the <laughs> diversity training. So when you're clapping on two and four, what you're going to do... <laughs> and we understand it's tricky because one is where it starts, so why wouldn't that be where the clapping starts? <laughs> Kelsey, are you having an asthma attack? No, you're just like that? Okay. <laughs> But yeah, but this is where Mercedes Schlapp tells us about the four keys that Disney uses. Apparently they have this, like, you know, the, the four keys to their operation, which are, wait, I have them right here, safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. I feel like you wrapped too much under show. Can I give you that note? Yeah. Because they were like, safety, and they were like, man, well, yeah, a lot of shit thing. left. And they were like, courtesy, and they were like, okay. And then they were like, well, fuck. stuff else. Yes. <laughs> Do it faster. <laughs> but then, so, but then, like, they had the four keys, and that works great for a long time, but then along came the fifth 
key in 2021, which bum, was... Bum, bum. Right, yes, the key. There's a literal piano. <laughs> uh, there is, there is, actually. It's inclusion. And of course, yeah, right, we're supposed to go, those bastards. So, and of course they're like, but I, you know, they, they have the inclusion key, but I don't think they mean Christians and conservative peoples. And, and peoples, yeah. And I'm like... I'm like, well, you're actually, you're thinking of bigots, but yes, the overlap is very strong. How come we don't have any homeless shelters for people who have houses? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly the argument of this entire section of the fucking movie. Yeah. So, and the one, the one kid's like, you know, and they're not very inclusive of, of Christians and conservatives, or in my case, unvaccinated people. Fuck yeah. He works at fucking Disney. Yep. No, he doesn't. Well, no, he, he doesn't. Was, on his third day, Jeff spit into his open mouth, and he was like, all right, I'll go back to the reactor with my coworker. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> These people only exclusively work as haunted mansion ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> that foolish mortals lady got too hot and too now, sexual, and they were like, let's bring Kyle in here. <laughs> you want to talk about a kink experience? You know what? We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> Thank you. We had a meeting beforehand. We about did have a meeting. How I feel whole, about haunted mansion, and we decided. Thing that we, did. we decided on edging it. It's a yeah. private thought. <laughs> But that lady's so, definitely topping your kids. That's all I'm saying. And I want to be clear about one thing in this movie. Um, they imply several times that several of these, these people were fired for refusing to get vaccinated. And, and as much as I was like, yeah, go Disney, as it's been pointed out to me since, in the state of Florida, it's not legal to fire someone for refusing to get vaccinated. So that didn't fucking happen. Wait, the movie lied? Yes. <laughs> Well, so no, no, the movie never actually says that. They imply that. These people quit because they felt like it was too gay and didn't want anything to do with it. The movie, like, leads you to believe they got fired for refusing to get vaccinated, but they never actually say that happened because it didn't Same. fucking happen. First they came for the unvaccinated. <laughs> and I was like, Whoo. And Jeff did not speak out. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He was like... <laughs> <laughs> They were half of them were gone the next week. <laughs> and then they trot out some of their best friends, right? This is where they get the gay ex-employee who also felt persecuted because he was Christian. This dude rules. <laughs> this dude. Did you feel better after watching this dude? Because sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm having a bad week and like I have depression. And then I remember how much this guy fucking hates himself. <laughs> he wakes up and he's like, again, Jeffrey, you woke up again. <laughs> oh, I hate it. <laughs> so, so he says, he explains that he's a born again Christian. Um, and he, they, they wanted him to get a vaccine. Because, you know, the man or whatever. He didn't want to get the vaccine because of his religious beliefs. And he says he's not upset that they made him get the vaccine. He's upset because he had to expose his religious beliefs in order to get the exemption to the vaccination. No, you didn't. Well, there's no all, microbiology in the fucking Bible right, that, that you had to First of all, this. that. Yes, exactly. What is your fucking religion? I don't want a vaccinism. Okay. In Jeffrey's defense, and no. I know this is bold, but in Jeffrey's defense... Picture you're the person who Jeffrey came to and was like, hey, Michelle, can I talk to you for a second? I need you to know that I need a religious exemption for my vaccine. And Michelle was like, what religion are you, Jeffrey? And he was like, I'm an evangelical Christian. <laughs> and she was like, what? <laughs> You had a Wizard of Oz themed birthday party <laughs> four years in a row. <laughs> it's a repeating event on my Google calendar, Jeffrey. <laughs> and he was like, yep. And she was like, no. <laughs> a... Fair. Okay. Yeah, there's a great moment where he's like, you know, this isn't inclusion at all. It's exactly... And he thinks about it for a second, and he goes, 
not inclusion. Oh. Because sometimes on the spot, you've seen me do it several times tonight. Sometimes when you're on the spot, you forget the word exclusion. You can't talk, you know. Sometimes that shit happens. I get it. I get it. It's tough when the mics are on, kid. <laughs> okay, but, but to be clear about this guy, his problem with Disney is about vaccination policy, yet they introduce him and they're like, he's gay. On our team, he's gay. Yes. For yeah. no reason. To improve the, their diversity, <laughs> equity, and inclusion score yes. of their shitty movie, which is about how you can't have DEI things. Yep. Yep. Assholes. So we, uh, we talked to um, Jose a little bit more. He, he tells us that he gets, quote, a lot of letters from people that agree with him. Now, first of all, Nobody gets a lot of fucking letters, right? This is now, and that's not a fucking thing. Technically, many of them are restraining orders, but <laughs> they're paper that come in the mail, yeah. <laughs> and I jerk off into it, so... Goes, he's like, you, you, we, you, do you want to show us some of these physical letters that you get? No, I don't want to show them to you. You just have to trust me on this. But, but trust us, a lot of people agree with him. He says something here about how, like, the, everybody says that they write to him to tell him that, like, we may not be vocal, but we're the majority. I mean, that's not how, that's not how that works at all. So then we get, we check back in with Mercedes in her ominous backdrop so she can tell us about how Disney fucked up all their iconic stories with a bunch of gayness and black mermaids. Right? And this is my favorite backdrop by far of the entire movie because I shit you not, I am not making this up. She is standing in front of a white fence that is being painted black. <laughs> they are black washing the fence is the accusation of yep. this movie. Yep. And an evil flock of crows yes, flies yes. by. And I was like, bad pick when you're defending old Disney. Right. <laughs> was crows now. <laughs> they don't have any advice for Dumbo anymore. So, <laughs> so and this is where they, this is one of the major points they made. They, they, they actually talked about this earlier in the movie as well, but then they really drill into it right here. They start talking about how the Disney, I guess, has removed gendered greetings from, from their parks. They no longer say, you know, welcome boys and girls, welcome ladies and gentlemen. And these people are so goddamn freaked out about that. How insecure in your gender are you that you need to be reminded all the time? Right, right. Imagine the only way that could bother you is if you were like, oh God, it's happening, it's happening. Hello, boys and girls. That's right, I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> you heard the nice lady buckling you into Space Mountain. There's only two. <laughs> Hava, Nagila, Hava. <laughs> I don't know why the evangelical Christian is comforting himself with Hopkins. No, that's probably weird. That's a little weird. But okay. he is. <laughs> but naming people's gender when you meet them is fucking insane. It is. Like, we're used to that for some reason, but that's crazy. Like, hello, your gender's male. Yes. You have a penis, I assume, little boy. <laughs> Mercedes, like, they, they were so fucking 
Walking around this. This is where Mercedes says, you know, it looks like Walt Disney World is fast becoming Walt Disney Woke. <laughs> Every guy has like a big X and a Y in their penis. And then like sometimes it's the X and sometimes it's the Y. And that's father yeah. to yeah, Sure, sure. No, I was thinking of a, of, a, of a guy like yelling female as he comes or whatever. And... <laughs> which is similar. Just right, saying it basically... worked for me. <laughs> I was yelling boys the entire time. <laughs> I like the room that just put up with that joke that was just like, mm-hmm, he needs to do those sometimes. That's okay. That's, uh, that is okay. There will be other jokes for me. Yes. See, what time is it on the old cell phone a <laughs> So, so Y'all could work at the company. <laughs> so we get Mercedes. She ominously introduces this leaked Disney corporate video, which you may or may not be aware of, where the one, uh, the gay writer talks about how wonderful it is to work for Disney because they don't discourage her from including gay storylines in, in shows. And, they're, and of course, we hear that, and, and we're like, oh, well, that, that's lovely. And the movie's like, huh? <laughs> Why, are you outraged? Are you guys pissed yet? Hey, Disney movie, I'm just saying, if you want some of that audio of what I said about Ron DeSantis, <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. And I meant it. We even have a plot <laughs> for Puss in Boots, yeah. So, so then we, we get this woman, I guess she's on like Fox Business or whatever, reacting to this video. Because when this video first leaked, the Christians really freaked out about it. The, because the, the chick says in it, she's like, you know, Disney's been very cooperative of my secret gay agenda. Wink, wink. And they're like, see, she has a secret gay agenda. Right? <laughs> and they freaked out about this for several days. And they talked about it on Fox fucking news. Because what else are they going to talk about? And they, they, they brought out this woman who is a lesbian and, and she's going like, you know, this is the problem right here. Like we work so hard to tell people we don't have a secret gay agenda and here she is telling us our, everybody our secret gay agenda. But she was laughing, literally yes, yes, laughing yes. out as she said sarcastically secret gay agenda. Although I'm cool if it's not secret and she's yeah. not being sarcastic. Yeah, right. I bet you could get Tammy Bruce to run into a big hole in the wall if you painted it. <laughs> oh, like a train tunnel? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, like, yeah. I sure. Think if you planted a big hole in the floor, she would be like, watch out, it's a hole! <laughs> so then this guy, this um, another bullshit job title that I have, this movie reviewer uh, named Christian Toto, he comes on to lament the fact that, you know, you can't monitor all the stuff that your kids are watching, which is why this is so dangerous. It's so easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so easy. You just have to like your kids even a little. Okay. You have to like your kids as much as you like a bad roommate. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my wife will get on stage and recite every episode of Bluey for you word for word <laughs> right fucking now. You want the little Einstein's theme song? I got it. It's <laughs> in my brain. So then uh, Ben Carson shows up at this point. And uh, he gives his little speech about how, you know, according to these people, equality amounts to extra rights. And I'm like, yeah, Ben, because nobody ever had to make a law forcing hotels to admit white guests, right? Again is the fucking point. Also, you just did a section about religious exemptions yes! for vaccines. Right. And he's like, nobody should get extra rights. Fuck, did that just, just a second ago? Now, it was the last scene. You, you'll cut this, right? Yeah. <laughs> I will say, though... 
Ben shows us how you mispronounce a word because unlike Mr. Nuku Cuckoo, uh-oh, I messed up the word, Ben gloriously backflips over the word gregariously. <laughs> oh. <laughs> An artist at work, he's like, it's pretty Nickelodeon. I'm awake again. So, I operated on people's brains three and a half years ago. Think about it. So terrifying. I so cut yeah. open people's skulls and everyone in the room was like, yep, we're just going to let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was really good at it. No, he used to be. Now yeah, I feel well, like... Yeah. So yeah, so, but, but they explain that... He explains that Disney is gratuitously inserting gay characters and gay scenes into their movies and making kids confront all this sexuality and and I just like again to bring us around to the reality of what we're talking about look if you are incapable of looking at a gay or trans person without thinking about them fucking that's a you thing right you're not sexualizing children because because their example is the fucking scene in Big Hero 6 where a trans person is in the tampon aisle Right? Look at how sexual that is, buying tampons. They have to lie about the scene, too, because yes. they're like, they show a scene where a trans character is buying tampons. So either they lied or they think Baymax is trans. <laughs> and I'm way more interested in that theory. <laughs> so now right. I'm picturing Baymax murdering Ron DeSantis. <laughs> Ooh. You All felt right. it, right? It's real. It's in your hearts. Yeah. You're ready to do it. <laughs> all right, well... It's not I... like weapons come out. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Well, all right. Well, I think we all have something we'd like to picture for a second, so we need another quick minute for a break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Disney succeed in turning America's youth into a bunch of polyamorous, transgendered, godless gays? Does that have a downside? What exactly do these nincompoops think Disney has to gain from that? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the somehow more unhinged conclusion of Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. And we're back with Ken Hinkleman of the University of Crutherford's Women's Studies Department. Ken, thanks so much for agreeing to do an interview with me. Just a curious interviewer. Oh, okay. You uh, you said that weird just now. No, I, I actually, no, I didn't. So why don't you tell us about your agenda, if you will? Um, sorry, do you mean like syllabus? If that's what you want to call it. Right. Uh, okay. So we start with some introductory texts just to sort of establish a baseline. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So mm -hmm. if one of your students, a child, came to you and said, oh, I'm trans. What would you do? I'd respect their decision. Aha! Did, did we get that? Did we get that? Oh, we got that. Got, <laughs> got what? Well, you just, you admitted you would turn a, a kid trans. It's not what I said. Well, okay, you said you'd respect their choice. Yes. Well, there, there it is again. Ha! <laughs> You are a gold hey, mine. Hey, yeah, yeah, real quick, I'm going to stop you there. The thing you think is a gotcha isn't a gotcha for me. It's just what I think. The reason you think it's a gotcha is because when you say the things that you really think, you get in trouble for them because you're a bigot. Mm. I thought it was just thoughts. Nope, nope, it's your thoughts, man. Oh, yeah, that actually makes a lot more sense. Sure, yeah. I'm a racist, too. Yep, that tracks. And we're back! Yeah! Live from Orlando, Florida! Yeah! Which has, if nothing else, spectacularly good weather. Yeah! All right, so we're going to rejoin the action this time with the moment that Tony Perkins still has not unclenched his asshole for after all these years. That would be the lesbian kiss in the 2022 Pixar film Lightyear, right? 
So, and they start off with all these headlines where basically the admission is like, yeah, we gave them an absurd amount of free publicity on that movie, actually, now that we look back at all these fucking headlines. Yeah, well, yeah, they, they explain that the movie tanked, which is... Did it? No, maybe no. I think it made $26 million, $226 million box office yeah, yeah, for a profit. Yeah, that's what I, yep, yep. As a matter of fact, when they looked for a uh, headline about it bombing, they had to resort to the Washington Examiner, so... That's the yeah. same as the Post, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's Washington. Same. They're, they're looking even more close to the Post. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, and then Bill Donahue shows up and he explains to us that he tolerates gay people, okay? I honestly, not gonna lie, didn't expect that. Well, it's also a fucking lie, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, so it's a fucking lie, but, he, but he's, he, he's making this point that like it's one thing to tolerate somebody, it's another thing to, you know, promote what they're doing. And I'm just like, yeah, it just, it's like that time that Jesus implored his uh, followers to tolerate thy neighbor and all of that. <laughs> I remember that. And then we hear from uh, Carrie Burke, who is, I guess, the president of Disney's Entertainment. And she, we, we hear her going woke, right? She so, explains that two of her kids are LGBTQ. And, and I think, I honestly think they introduced that so that we'll be like, yep, she's a bad mom. Yeah. Clearly. Well, because they believe in parental rights unless your kids are gay. You're right, you yeah. You gotta do the opposite of the parental rights. Right. It's like the laws thing. <laughs> So she explains, they, they show a video of her explaining that, like, you know, they're finally bringing in some gay characters into their cartoons, but they're, they don't have gay leads yet, and they need to work on that. And I'm just like, oh, how very admirable. Oh, I'm supposed to be scared of that, aren't I? Well, I love because they try to put words in her mouth. They're like, and from now on, 50% of the characters will be gay or just not white. Yes, yeah. right, right, because what she said is underrepresented, right? 50% of the characters will be, and they, they say in the movie, uh, Mercedes says, she said that 50%, that's half. <laughs> Thanks. Mercedes. Got it. Know your audience, Mercedes. Yeah, New York Post audience. <laughs> yeah, she fucking wheels out a whiteboard. Okay, so this is your child support check. And yes. we're going to slice it right down the, oh, I lost you. Okay. okay. You know, two... <laughs> no! <laughs> but so, yeah, they mention them. Do they? Does the movie think Disney is grooming kids t to be black? <laughs> <laughs> or, or like, or miscegenated? Grooming. Well, sorry, yeah, yeah I heard it. <laughs> yes, they do. Yep. Withdrawn. They don't say that, but yes, they do. Come so. on, it's obvious they're trying to put the moan in Moana, if you know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> No, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, you can no, have but, that one, Bill Donahue. But what's so funny is Bill Donahue, go, everybody. <laughs> See, you wouldn't hurt him. You wouldn't hurt him. You'd boo him, and he'd go home fine. <laughs> <laughs> I need you people to get on mission. <laughs> so yeah, so but they they parlay all of this into saying, but you know, which is evidence that Disney is now teaching kids about sex. What they've talked about on the other side of that, therefore, was including black people in their movies. How is it, or trans people, how is that teaching someone about sex? What do they think sex is, you think? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Anything scary, yeah, well said. Oh, and then they show the, the clips of Little Demon. Right, they say, and now Disney's promoting shows like Little Demon, which is not on Disney Plus or nor a show for kids. Right, well, right, important. yes, absolutely, yeah. Wait till you hear what the scamps are getting up to over on the Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Disney's a big production corporation. They do other things besides kids stuff. Right, it's like being mad at Dupont because they make like pacifiers with their plastic and giant dildos. So like- Are you saying that babies yeah. should right. suck on giant dicks? Right. right, right. The movie. Don't answer, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Bill's answer would be, well, also medium, also, also ones that are just a good size. They always smother before they get to mine. God. Yeah, I didn't Dude. like it. I didn't like it either. I didn't like it. No, but nobody it was enjoyed fine that one. And now it's ours. So, <laughs> then you're welcome. <laughs> 
So then Ben Carson pops in to explain the neurobiology of watching devil cartoons. And he says, this is the only claim he's ever going to make about the brain at any point in the movie. He says, the brain remembers everything you've ever seen and everything you've ever heard. And you only use you know. 10% of it, Ben. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Shut the he, fuck up. He opens with, the brain is very complex. And I feel like that's how he opens surgeries now. <laughs> as sort of a pre-apology. The way Noah introduces me as the bad friend, so you know to try to take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> yes. He just slices up in some kid's skull. The brain is very complex. We know, Ben. We know. <laughs> So, and then um, Bill Donahue shows up to explain how the entire, all of civilization, not just our civilization, all of civilization has had the Ten Commandments at its center for the last 2,000 years. That's his claim. Yeah, right. And then we get Vivek Ramaswamy complaining, you know, like giving us this how dare Disney bring social justice issues into their movies, right? Which is basically him saying, why can't all entertainment be mindless? Yeah. It's supposed to be a cishet Skinner box for kids. Right. You added thoughts. Right. Right. No, look, I'm I can't. President. I get why the makers of this film want more mindlessness in film, but come on, bro. You can't demand it. Does so then, anyone else ever expect Vivek when he talks to be like, why won't it come off? They. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, no, no. Oh, There's no. What? She said it would come off if I said enough things. It would just. And then I could. I, would, I don't feel delightsome at all. And then I could be one. <laughs> so then Mercedes Schlapp shows back up. You're She's, not talking about the walrus cum. You're talking about. It's not the walrus. Cum. I would have preferred you were talking about the walrus He's cum. He's proud of the walrus okay. cum. Okay. <laughs> He loves the walrus That's cum. true. That's true. There's no politics to walrus cum. Are you, Not to vice. I don't want yeah. to explore okay. that. No, I don't want to explore that. So uh, we're going to give you that Sparkle one. Sparkle donkey. There's no politics to <laughs> walrus cum. So the thing is, is if I say sparkle donkey tequila now with no walrus cum, that is a true statement, Right. I don't think they got. I don't think they want to argue with me on that. They must have weird <laughs> meetings after our live shows. Huh? We have to expect, they're not like a wacky liquid death. Like we're edgy brand. They're just nice people in Seattle who were like, "Yeah, let's let the psychos say whatever they want yes. about our drink." <laughs> right, right. Sharon said the line went up and to the right, so I don't fucking know. This. <laughs> Don't we have a couple Sparkle Donkey people here right now? Do we have Sparkle Donkey people? I would not volunteer. Hey, somebody's hand not. went up and their hand got slapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding? If I was them right now, I would be slowly pulling out a katana to be like... <laughs> Chris, if you stand up, I'm going to slice you down. I'm going to cut you down. Like Dolly Parton on a bender. Do you hear me, Chris? <laughs> we work in health insurance. <laughs> yes. So Mercedes shows back up. She's now surrounded by ominous money bags. And this whole next part is fucking hilarious because they're trying to simultaneously make these two arguments. Argument one, go woke, go broke. Argument two, they're doing this for the money. Right? <laughs> So her point at first is she's standing in front of all these money banks, but her initial point is that Disney isn't money grubbing enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some disagreement in the crowd on that one. Um, We're not going to say which audience member laughed way too hard at that one. <laughs> but if we did, he wouldn't be able to say no to us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, and then, of course, they explain that Disney also doesn't deny climate change, so that's political right there. They recognize the existence of the climate. And then they say that the CEO of BlackRock <laughs> is too liberal. They do. They do. Short of accusing Satan, the <laughs> prince of darkness himself, of being too nice. I don't know if it's short. <laughs> no. I cannot. No. Of a sillier statement. Yeah. But the BlackRock guy's real. Yeah. So, you're right. Right. So, so here's the thing. 
they start shitting on the whole idea of the ESG movement, which is the environmental, social, and governance movement. Now, this is not a good, like, this isn't like a bunch of bazillionaires going like, you know, we should be much more uh, conscious of our impact on the environment. This is a bunch of bazillionaires going like, if we keep ignoring this, it's going to cost us money. Right? That's entirely what this is, is that, hey, maybe we should rethink this because eventually it's going to cost a lot of fucking money to ignore it. And that's what they're saying is the evil fucking thing. Right? The fact that capitalism itself now has to admit that environmentalism is the goal. And that's, by the way, the quote that they take from the BlackRock guy, right? Yeah. He's like drowning a kitten. He's like, yeah, they just keep asking us. Ah, <laughs> oh, I got away. <laughs> Aren't you, are you glad I ended the pantomime with the right. kitten getting away? <laughs> yeah, he knows, you know what happens with Lucinda when you don't. Exactly. Um, <laughs> she goes full Dolly Parton on a Wednesday. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. That's, who do you think she learned from? So, <laughs> That's what they did at Dolly World, they don't say, but every Monday, Lucinda and Dolly would throw a ballast song into the center of the room between them, and then whoever walked out was yeah. Dolly Parton that week. <laughs> so yeah, but, but ultimately what they did is they got that bullshit, you know, every corporation has their bullshit, like we really care about the environment and everything that we do, we try to think of the environment. They got that video and they're like, look at this fucking liberal asshole. <laughs> so. And, and Schlapp finishes this section by going, it's the old adage, go woke, Go broke. And I wrote in my notes, ah, yes, that old chestnut. I believe it first appeared in the Farmer's Almanac. You Ben Franklin many moons ago. <laughs> By the way, she also fucks it up. She says, get woke, go broke, right? She fucks up her own stupid adage. Sorry, one of the, I have to mention this. Yes. What they're claiming is that BlackRock and Vanguard, which are two of the biggest asset managers, they're the biggest owners of Disney stock. Yes, right. They're also literally, I checked just to be sure, they're the biggest owners of Fox Corporation. Disney stock. owns the Fox Corporation. Mm -hmm. Right. Also, Disney's stock went down in 2022, and they <laughs> make a big deal out of that. Every major index went down. And, uh, yes. What happened? In, what was going on in 2022? <laughs> Does hard. anyone remember anything around 2022 that might have negatively right. well, affected they, the stock market? They, they're trying to point, they're, they're saying like, you know, they're doing all this bullshit liberal ESG crap, but actually they're losing a bunch of money. And they show this headline that says, Disney shares hits their lowest level in two years. And I'm like, that's not very long though. <laughs> two years? And Come on, you ass. Everybody's stock did that. Yeah. Right. And, and hey, you know what? Tis, Disney stock is doing shit right now because they're investing too much in Disney Plus. It has nothing to do with being too gay. Maybe they should make so, it gayer. Lean in. There you go. <laughs> right. Clearly, clearly that's what you the people the want. You got plus right there. Yeah. Right. Disney LGBTQ plus. There you go. There you go. Squeeze it right in the side there. And it's just nothing but porn. Elsa fucking. But they don't warn you. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So then, so then we get this, uh, Mercedes shares us a quote from Walt Disney where he basically said, you know, freedom is good and tyranny is bad. Every time someone tries to make a Walt Disney quote seem like magical or wise, it's the saddest sentence. Right. Bumbled in an old age. The man never said anything even remotely close to interesting. He's like, there's a park and you can drive around it and a little car my mouse friend. And they're like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> Is Christ reborn among us? <laughs> this imagination factory just spewed wisdom all over my face and chest. Oh my God. <laughs> we gotta get a spot at the Ramada for this guy. <laughs> So, but now it's time to talk about how fucking communist Disney is. <laughs> um, Disney, as they point out, is cozying up to the Chinese government. And when they say the words Chinese government, there is a music cue. Oh my God. And I want you to really internalize this that I will not do an imitation of. Yes. That's yep. good. That's good. I want yep. to do a bit that includes the imitation of the music. Yeah. Now, me. It's, it was so it's Song of the South China, for sure. <laughs> we won't sing it, but that's what you heard. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically, look. 
it is absolutely disgusting the extent to which entertainment companies are cozying up to China and making concessions to their fascist fucking government. Yes, that's disgusting. Disney is doing that. That's fucking disgusting. It's real easy to be pissed off about that correctly. They do not manage to do it. Right, because they're like, well, in China, they make them take out all that gay stuff. Why can't we get that good oppression like China has? They done got rid of that black stormtrooper, and I, <laughs> I tried to do that at my local Amic. Oh God! And they done arrested me for vandalism <laughs> because I came too much. <laughs> How's that even? Where is that even? <laughs> what is a Uyghur? Oh, God. All right. Hey, if you don't watch these movies, watch this movie just to watch Tony Perkins with a straight face try to say Uyghur. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. And the Uyghurs. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wait, no, they actually called their death camp Auschwitz? Come on. <laughs> That's not real. You're pulling a prank on old Tony. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so, yeah, they make their arguments about how, like, you know, Dan, we can't, how, how come we can't be more repressive just like those, those Chinese? And then... They talk about how Disney, I, I guess it, it, the Mulan advertising, they, they thanked the region of China that is committing the, the Uyghur genocide or where China is committing the Uyghur genocide. And that's horrible that they did that, you know. But of course, as much as Disney could do by drawing attention to this, I feel like maybe the Catholic Church could do more, right? And to my knowledge, the Pope has talked about the Uyghur genocide exactly once in listing them amongst a long list of oppressed people in the world, and then backed off of that. So, like, you know, fucking plank in your eye and all that Jesus shit. Yeah. But, and then, oh, speaking of which, this is the part where Vivek Ramaswamy comes on to talk about how immoral it is. <laughs> Heath, would so you like to fucking say? Mad. <laughs> Vivek Ramaswamy is literally a billionaire because he owns a big pharma company. He founded a pharma company that did so much goddamn business in China. They yes! They multiple subsidiaries located in China. He's full of shit. Right, and he's on this fucking documentary saying, can you believe that? Cozying up to China. And then they start talking about how they talk about the Disney poster that reduced the size. And I don't know if you guys remember this. The Chinese poster for The Force Awakened reduced the sign of, uh, what was his name, John Boyega? Oh, yeah. The, they did a Mercator projection. Yes, right. Of the fucking poster. That's a valid gripe, I would say. Oh, absolutely. I'll give them one. Absolutely. But then, of course, because they brought up racism, now we have to hear from Ben Carson again, right? They cut back over to Ben Carson. Which side of racism am I on? Yes. <laughs> they cut to Ben Carson like they didn't tell him they were going to cut to Ben Carson. <laughs> he might as well be eating his lunch like, you said I was done. <laughs> no, 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 you said first say the word, then peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> we didn't think you would eat it on the set in front of the camera. I won't be in my sandwich now. Okay. The brain is a very complicated thing. <laughs> it has many buttons and two levers. <laughs> I don't like jelly. It reminds me of sin. <laughs> So yeah, but they summarize this section by pointing out that uh, Disney talks about gay rights in their cartoons, but not the Uyghur genocide, so they don't really care about human rights. Also, they care about the black community. Anyway, the Little Mermaid was fucking Caucasian. Yeah, yes. Human, fish, <laughs> hybrid Caucasian. <laughs> Come on. And then, so, and then fucking Mercedes Schlapp comes on to lament the lost cause of the Song of the South or whatever. This is where they start complaining about the fact that uh, Disney is pulling some of their old incredibly racist material and putting trigger warnings in front of some of the other stuff. So not even pulling it. Yeah. Right, right. Most of it's not even yeah. being pulled. Yeah. Here's the thing. Let me give a little advice to the racists out there. <laughs> if, I wish you wouldn't. If you want to make... 
an argument that your racism isn't rapist. Racist? What? That, that's I'll, sorry. I, I got Freud to talk himself about. is going to show up on yeah. that one. Yeah. If you want to make an argument that your racism isn't racist, don't play the clip. Because this guy is like, the aristocrats, it's a cat, and then the cat is like, huh, and you're like, <laughs> wow. Because I will tell you, if they had been like, hey, Eli, how bad is the aristocrats one to 10? I would have been like, not aristocrats, aristocats. Yep. Yes. <laughs> aristocats one to 10, I would have been like, I don't know, pretty bad, I don't remember. Now I remember. Yep. Yes, <laughs> right. Well, and again, keeping in mind that to the extent that they're pulling anything or anything, it's not like they're buying up every old copy and having it destroyed. They're just failing to include it on this new thing, Disney Plus, that they're doing, right? That's what they're complaining about. And again, like Heath points out, most of it they're not even pulling. They're just saying like, hey, this contains offensive stereotypes that most people probably don't want. Just, for example, just one. The Muppet Show mm -hmm. literally had Johnny Cash singing in front of a Confederate flag. Yeah. They didn't pull it. They were just like, if you don't like that, <laughs> we're still doing it. There's a Confederate flag. And people were like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> warning? Right. No, they, they, they say that they're going to put up a warning before the Muppets. And I'm like, oh, is it because of all the offensive stereotypes? And they're like, yeah. And then Bill's like, why the hell would you put a warning in front of the Muppets? Well, as a Muppet, Bill Donahue is a <laughs> He's sort of the primordial Muppet, the Muppet from whence all Muppets evolved, you know? Like, yeah. when you look into the eyes of a shark and you realize that's God's rough draft, that's how Bill Donahue is. Oh, that explains a lot. He's just sitting there, like his, uh, his partner died, so now he just has to sit in the back of the theater yelling at himself and shit. It was yeah, terrible! So, <laughs> oh, just me. <laughs> I think they should kill one of Waldorf or Sattler. That would fucking rule. There you go. Think about it. They could get us. They could get us so good. Remember when Jim Henson died and they told us with the Muppets and we were nine and we never got over it? Just me? Okay. And I was older. Three weirdos in this room were like, I was there. <laughs> it was the Oscars and I was trying to have a childhood. So... So yeah, but now I want I also want to point out, so Bill comes in here all pissed off about the Muppets warnings and shit, talking about like, well, you know, I don't get offended by these stereotypes. It's like, well, they're not of you, you asshole. Bill Donahue is the most thin-skinned human being alive, right? His entire fucking job is getting pissed at random shit and calling it Catholic persecution. That's all he fucking does. Yeah. And he's going to walk out here and pretend he's not offended by stereotypes. To be clear, the major contribution of Bill Donahue's career is trying to stop the investigation into child rape that his organization yes. is doing. Yep. He gets offended when people talk about him fucking kids. Yes. <laughs> yep. Poor you don't him. have to bring it up. Yes. And then, so, and then Ben Carson comes on. He wants to double down on this point. He starts talking about how, um, you know, well, if you go out there looking for racism, sure, you'll find it. And I'm like, yeah, Ben, because we're really, really racist, <laughs> right? Not because it's ill a story. He's like, you know, well, you, if you put everything under a microscope, I'm like, I bet I could find the fucking racism in Dumbo without a microscope, Ben. And then they play a clip from Lady and the Tramp of the fucking, the, the Siamese cats. They're like, what's racist about this? And we're like, everything is racist about that. It's somehow racist towards cats. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Oh, and then they try to tag in Tim Burton, who Eli has unfairly maligned in this episode. Look, look, a lot of people say that Tim Burton is racist, but maybe... He just believes that people of color never die with unfinished business, and that's why he doesn't put them in his movies. Yeah, okay. So, to be clear, He's Tim... too progressive. So, 
want to be clear, they got to clear this little part of the movie up because they, they're like, you know, even Tim Burton, who's made all these movies with Disney and made all of this money for him and shit, says he'll never work with Disney again. And they imply that it's because all the gay shit. It has nothing to do with any of that fucking shit. He came out and he made a big statement about how I don't, I probably won't work for Disney again because it's homogenizing art and I don't want to make a fucking Marvel movie where I have to make it fit into 37 other movies, right? He feels like it stifles creativity. That's what he was fucking talking about. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything that they're talking about. But yeah, he probably should have some inclusion in his fucking movies. Though. Also, like, really, Tim? They're not letting you stretch your wings and fly? <laughs> well, that's, yeah, it's been a little while since he made a hit fucking movie, too. That might have something to do with it. One time so, I made a cat woman who I wanted to spank me, and that's pretty much <laughs> as far as I've gone. I think a lot of us wanted Catwoman to spank. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, and then Mercedes comes on at this point. She's like, you know who else agrees with us? The blogosphere. <laughs> the blogosphere. And not just any blogosphere. The quartering. Yes, the quartering yeah. shows up. Okay. Quart quartering is a right-wing YouTuber who we've had a little bit of contact with. <laughs> but my favorite fun fact about the quartering is that 24 hours apart, he tweeted, nobody cares if your grandma dies during COVID. And then his grandma died of COVID. Yes. Yes. Guys, that's really fucking funny. <laughs> like, I know you can't think how funny that is right now, but you're going to be driving home and you're going to pause your murder plan for Ron DeSantis and you're going to be like... Euphemisms, damn it! <laughs> that's super fucking funny. <laughs> so... Do you think he ever has the moment where he's like, ah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> they got me. There's like minutes apart. <laughs> I got me. I got me. Also, I bet his grandma did a hard breath out just to keep it going. Like she read his tweets and she was like, I'll show you, you little asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I did this to turn gay as a girl. I can do it to die now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we get the quartering. I don't know who those other fucking random YouTubers. They, they show us a couple of YouTubers because they're like the kids. They like the YouTubers, right? So they show us this one chick. Who the fuck knows who she is? She's like, you know, the Disney's gay agenda got exposed. They're about to lose the Mickey Mouse trademark. I'm like, do you think those things are related? It's like the like the trademark office said, you guys are too gay to be trusted with this trademark anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Steamboat Willie signing a contract with Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> so, steering his ship into the side of the Dominion building. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she says. On 9 11. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, she, I, I love when Eli has these. Oh, I haven't forced him to beep it yet. Hold on, kind of moments. <laughs> So, and then the YouTuber girl, she, she comes on, to, or she adds to, she's like, all of the sexual predator employees at Disney are being exposed. I'm surprised we didn't flash back to the disclaimer at the beginning, right, for just a second. This is just her. We're on base. So then, okay, so then Mercedes shows up. She's going to wrap things up for us. She explains to us that Disney's approval rating is plummeting, right? Okay. No need to make a movie about it, then. Yes. <laughs> Right, but again, her idea is that Disney is less popular because it's too popular. popular. Yes, yes, exactly. It keeps giving in to its audience, and so it keeps getting less popular. So she bids us adieu, and then we get this closing title card, and I love it so goddamn much, because it's this whole big, like, we asked several times for the CEO of Disney to sit down with us for this movie, and they wouldn't even, I'm like, you're, no one. You're the, you, this, okay, we watched this on their YouTube channel, on the Catholic League's YouTube channel. They have one-eighth as many YouTube subscribers as we do. <laughs> We're an audio medium. We don't even do video. You know, I also. We put it up like a terrorist manifesto. Yes. <laughs> for the newspaper to find. Yes. You know what? We also asked Disney's CEO to come and be on our fucking show tonight. He ignored us too, Catholic League. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Iger! <laughs> I wouldn't know how you guys felt about Bob Iger. I was, yeah, I was, I was wondering if we were going to get the boo. We didn't get the murder boo, which was great. Jeff? All right. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff is holding perfectly still. He refuses. He stopped breathing. Someone help him. <laughs> He's shifting his molecules in and out of existence until I stop talking about Bob Iger. <laughs> so, do they teach you that? <laughs> it's what they can do instead of saying no. Yeah. Here's how to turn invisible. <laughs> All right. So obviously shit's going pretty bad for Disney, right? They're having a rough go of it. So I have a final question to close things off tonight. If Disney wants to placate Bill Donahue and all the various bigots that made this movie, what ride must they add to Disney World? Ooh. Uh, Song of the South. Shit! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, Peter Pan and the Lost Proud Boys. Oh, nice! Nice! Well done. Well done. I had... Um, I had Hall of Stolen Presidencies, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, on that note, we're gonna wrap things up for the night. Once again, a huge thanks to everyone at the Orlando Shakes Theater uh, for all their awesome work, and a huge thanks to all of you for coming out tonight. <laughs> and on that note, Guy. Oh my goodness! It's a standing ovulation! Thank you so much. And on that Let's note. Let's all go to Rod's house! <laughs> <laughs> you all felt it, we could have done it. <laughs> We could. We just want to eat fast food and watch our TV shows. So. <laughs> we all came here in cars. It's not too late. I saw so many people being like, oh, no, no, we're not doing murder, obviously. What? <laughs> and, and on that outtake, we'll leave you <laughs> with the Breakfast Club close. Ron DeSantis went on to ban the periodic table of elements for sexualizing kids with menstruation talk. <laughs> it's because <laughs> it's periodic. Okay. It's good shit. Because period. Right. Mickey Mouse <laughs> went on to do more gay stuff. Sparkle Donkey Tequila had yet another incredibly tense meeting about why they keep sending us free shit. Interstitial one, one. You have two of them in this interstitial one, don't you? Do I? I think you do. Yeah, so, well, yeah. But this is interstitial one. It starts with you. Hey, Bill, know. what's up? Oh, oh, you know, I labeled, ah, that's why you told me you labeled yes. two of them. I was like, yep. I am awaiting at the top of the thing. The puzzle comes together. <laughs> <laughs> clever, no illusions. Clever. You almost tricked me. I, you almost tricked you. You did to <laughs> trick you. I almost untricked you is what happened. Look behind you. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not me. All right. Interstitial one. And now you are we're in on our secret that we don't actually go anywhere when we leave for the breaks. <laughs> Heath sometimes eats a caramel. Yeah. I do. <laughs> 
I duck under my own desk. <laughs> Back up. Not yeah, ready. No. Yeah, right, right. I usually poop. <laughs> so... And when we come back, we'll dive into all the shameless dimperma- di- <laughs> Morgan, where are you, Morgan? <laughs> he's, he's not here to help me. He's in Canada, damn it. We were like, we were like, hey, Morgan, you want to come to Florida? And he's like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm Canadian. I don't need to do that shit. He didn't escape that chocolate factory yeah. <laughs> to come down to Disney. <laughs> this- <laughs> To be re-enslaved. Okay, that's the real reason he didn't didn't show up. <laughs> Prove me wrong, coward. <laughs> I'm sorry for the next nine episodes where my audio is like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.